What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel man. You guys know what it is. It's your boy Kevo man. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of like war videos and stuff about like the Philippine army and the snipers and the training and trust me, it's been a lot of great videos. But apparently, you guys told me in the comments down below, yo Kevo, did you know that there was a point in time when the Philippines was the superpower? What? The superpower. Now that is a little hard to believe. I gotta be honest, a little hard to believe. But you guys told me check this video out. This video is called Super Weapon During President Marcos Regime. Like apparently, the Philippines at one point had all the super weapons and they were like one of the strongest armies in the world. So I'm like, you know what? I gotta check this out for myself. I gotta see, I gotta see what you guys were talking about and if this is true, okay? So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna find out if that's true and what happened. Like, what happened to all the weapons, right? Anyways, let's get in this video. Maybe some of you don't know that once upon a time, the Philippines is one of the most powerful countries in Asia when it comes in military forces. Okay. According to some research about the history of armed forces of the Philippines, the Philippines owned numerous number of fighter planes, jet fighter, attack helicopters, warships, a submarine chaser, war tanks, and one of the most advanced super weapons in Asia named Bong Bong One. Bong Bong One. So today in this video, we will talk about how powerful is the Philippine military forces during the President Marcos regime. The military forces with the most modern equipment in Asia that you could never imagine as of today. I honestly can't imagine them having like advanced weapons because like over the time like they're like the philippines like in weapons wise they've been falling behind and now they're actually starting to like catch up in the weapons like they have starting to get better weapons now that's what i'm starting to notice but i can't imagine that at one point in time they had better weapons than everyone else untold stories President Marcos. A lot of people say he was the greatest president. According to some research, only three countries around the world owned, bought F-8 fighter aircraft. Aside from France and the United States, the Philippines is the only country in Asia who owned bought F-8 Crusader. Okay. Bought F-8 Crusader is a carrier-based air superiority jet aircraft, gained fame during the Vietnam War in the 1970s. By destroying 19 Vietnamese aircraft in an air-to-air -air combat during that war, during the Marcos regime, the Philippines acquired 35 units of bought F-8 Crusader wow. in 1977. Okay. However, these aircraft were destroyed during Mount Pinatubo eruption and never been replaced after the Marcos regime. The Philippine Air Force also acquired 19 units of F-5A and 3 units of F-5B light fighter aircraft from 1965 to 1967. That 5A Freedom Fighter aircraft was also used by the very famous Blue Diamond Aerobatic Team in 1968. The Blue Diamond is a national aerobatic team of the Philippine Air Force and one of the oldest formal flying aerobatic teams in the world. You see this? I did not know about this. The Blue Diamond. Do they still have the Blue Diamond in the Philippines? Is this still like a like an aerobatic team in the Philippines? Let me know in the comments because I did not know about this. Everyone knows about the Blue Jets in like the American ones. The blue, blue people that fly around in the blue planes, but I never knew about the Blue Diamond in the Philippines. Every Independence Day, the Blue Diamond performed their aerobatic skills and techniques up in the sky to show the world. When is in the when, when is Philippine Independence Day? I have no idea. Can you guys let me know in the comments when is the Independence Day of the Philippines? Let me know in the comments down below. World class talent of Air Force pilots in the Philippines. BRP Andres Bonifacio PF-7 is a Philippine Navy warship acquired by the Philippines in 1976. It was built by Lake Washington Shipyard in the United States and served as a lead ship in the Philippine Navy. BRP Gregorio del Pillar PF-8 is a Philippine Navy warship acquired by the Philippines in 1976. Just like the BRP Andres Bonifacio, it is one of the largest combat ship of the Philippine Navy during that time. Okay. BRP Diego Silang PF-9 and BRP Francisco de Gohoy are the other warships acquired by the Philippines in 1976 and 1979. 
However, after the Marcos regime, these four large warships of the Philippine Navy were discarded and sold as scrap. Oh wow. So after Marcos, it's pretty much it seems from the amount of getting so far in the video. After the Marcos regime, like the Philippines completely like stopped. Like they didn't want to be related to any like weapons or it like got rid of most of the weapons. Like the airplanes got destroyed in the in their eruption and they never got replaced. It seemed like the Philippines wanted to become like a peaceful nation after the Marcos regime. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments down below. If I'm right, let me know in the comments down below. But, but from what I'm watching from this video so far, it's like after the wars and everything, Philippines just didn't want to like spend their money on the military forces anymore. The Philippines also acquired four warship destroyer escorts. The BR Piraha Lacandula PF4 in 1976. The BRP Datu Kalanchau PS76 in 1967. The BRP Datu Sikatuna PF5 in 1976. And the BR Piraha Humabun PF6 in 1978. Fleet minesweeper like the BRP Datu Tupas PS-18 in 1975. Two coastal minesweepers, the RPS Zambalius and RPS Zambonga del Norte in 1979. Two minesweepers, the RPS Davao del Norte and RPS Davao del Sur in 1979. Two submarine chasers, the BRP Nueva Vizcaya in 1968 and BRP Negros Oriental in 1976. 26 units of amphibious warfare vessels, where some of these units are still active until now. Wow. Wow. Okay, okay. That's a lot of ships, man. For the Philippine nation, that is a lot of ships so far. And some of them are still active. That's that's actually quite interesting to know that they're still active. But, like, like even now, I'm starting to think, like, wow. So these ships were bought so long ago, so they haven't upgraded their armies till like, recently. Like, recently, I've been hearing a lot of news about the Philippine army being finally upgraded, like, their equipment-wise being upgraded. Like, don't get it wrong. Like, so Philippines have some of the best training. Filipinos have some of the best training. I know that. And everyone knows that. But their equipment, everyone keeps saying, like, yes, we understand that we have our equipment that may be out of date. And, like, this kind of right here is telling me how some of them are still... In service after being so long that tells you that yeah Kevin that it's it's been a while since the Philippines has last upgraded their equipment and a hospital ship the RPS hospital Nang Tulungan in 1975 during the President Marcos administration the Philippine army has a secret program named the Santa Barbara project a secret project where the Philippine Army is developing a locally made missile called Bong Bong 1. Bong Bong 1. The Bong Bong 1 missile has a 12 km firing range, and it was built by the Filipino scientists, with the help of German engineers and scientists. Okay, okay. From 1972 to 1980, these missiles were successfully tested 37 times in Cavallo Island. On September 1975, after the successful launching of four Bong Bong missiles, many people asked why is the Philippines making its own missile program. President Ferdinand Marcos then replied, The defense of the Philippines cannot be left to alliance with other countries. We must assume that there will be contingencies where even the United States may not be ready to come to our assistance. Okay, President, give him a, clap. Give him a round of applause for that, because he knew. Like, obviously, you can't rely on other nations to always come save, your, save you, you know, right? He, he wanted to let people know that Philippines is able to defend themselves. That's what I'm getting right now. Like, he really wanted to know, like, well, his time at least, that the Philippines could defend themselves and the Philippines were some of the best trained in the world. That's, that's what I'm getting so far from Marcos. Marcos was a very proud man, and he loved his country, man. Everyone keeps telling me that, telling me that Marcos was very proud of and loved his country. During that time, the Philippines had already a successful missile program, while China was still developing its first missile program. There's also a report that President Marcos had an underground submarine program together with his missile program. Okay. However, after President Marcos' regime, all of these military programs were disbanded and abandoned. Wow. According to some military and defense experts, if the past administration supported these military projects, maybe the Philippines won't suffer from bullying today. 
So, after watching that, man, it tells you, like, the Philippines was one pretty damn, like, pretty damn strong country, man. Like, what happened? Like, why did they stop? Okay? I, I mean, I have some ideas why. Because maybe because, one, they wanted the Philippines to, like, say we're not a war country anymore. But at the same time, like, the Filipino people are so proud of just, they, they're, they're, they're Listen, the Filipino people are nice. But they, they don't like getting, you cannot push them around. That's the thing about it. You try to push a Filipino person around, trust me, they're going to fight back and they're going to fight back hard. That's what I've learned, okay? They're super nice people, but do not get on their bad side, okay? That's one thing. Do not get on the bad side. Because they will push back. And I tell you, they, they will won't like back down. But it's just, it's just like, I can't believe like there was actually a time when the Philippines was one of the strongest armies in the world. And now... I mean, you gotta be admit, okay? They may not be the strongest army in the world, but they're the most well trained in the world. Cause there's a lot of people like flying all like countries all the world, especially United States, going over to the Philippines to learn how to like snipe, how to survive in the jungle. Cause trust me, I watch a lot of videos of Americans coming over to the Philippines to learn how to survive in the jungle. And you know, just learning off the Filipino people. Cause even like there's one video I watched about Joe Lambert. Yes, and he said that was the first time he ever got caught, and that was by the Philippines, because their trackers are amazing. The training is amazing, man. Some of the best snipers in the world come from the Filipino people, okay? And even down to the iron sight. You, like, I, I, I did a videos about the army and the iron sight, and a lot of the comments down below, you guys are proud to say, like, listen, Kevo, Filipino people can shoot, like, almost a mile away with the iron sight. Just the iron sight. And that is extremely hard to do. I'm like, whoa, that is amazing. That is that is something that Filipino people have. All right. But anyways, man, if you guys were just as surprised as me, let me know in the comments down below. If you guys enjoyed that video, man, you guys know what to do. Give the video a big thumbs up. You guys absolutely love the video, man. Love the video. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that post notification bells on. Make sure it's all notification bells, please. And also go check out my Instagram at it's Kevil for real, man. That's why I post my pictures and other stuff. You know, just go like all my pictures over there anyway. And also go follow me on my Facebook page at it's Kevil, man. That's my Facebook page. So go check me out over there. Follow me. I post my vlogs over there and all that fun stuff. All right. Anyways, that's the end of the video. I'm out. Peace.